Oh, is this new for you? Um, like the survival aspect of it, or just yeah. the yeah bushcrafting for sure. Yeah, never done that before. Just watched the YouTubes. Yeah. Um, but when I was a kid, uh, I used to go with my mom and stepdad a lot. We went out to Indianapolis, in Indiana, not Indianapolis. Oh, okay. Can I say that again. Yeah. We used to go out to Indiana, <laughs> uh, out to the dunes, um, Ooh, a bunch nice. of times, in, a lot in the summer. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was just like, you check out a site and yeah. you set up tents. Yeah. You bring hot dogs. That's about, that's, that was it. But it was nice. Yes. It was some great memories. Yeah. So it's not new sleeping outside. Yeah. Okay. It's new sleeping in extreme situations i don't know <laughs> yeah 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 in a, in a shelter that doesn't have a zipper yes yes yeah where the bugs have free access to you yeah yeah you know like a an air mattress you'd probably use at your grandma's yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> yep totally yeah. i remember growing up like it was all about like coleman wall tents like canvas tents and super heavy backpacks with metal frames and it was just a, a lot of pain to go camping you know but that was in like the early 90s mm -hmm. you know late 90s when I was born yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm a little bit older I guess a little bit I guess so what was the What's your favorite part of today? My favorite part of today. Yeah. Dinner was awesome. <laughs> dinner was. <laughs> dinner was awesome. Is that is that bad? <laughs> no, it was. Good. It was so good. We had cornbread. Yep. We had brats. Brats. Potatoes. potatoes. Carrots. Yeah. Smoke. Oh, it smoked. Great. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, it always, like, the food always tastes so much better. It does. When you're outside. Oh. Yeah. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. This is like 35 degrees right now. Yeah. And I'm comfortable. I wish, I, I, I like, really love it when it's like 20 degrees out because you can really get bundled up. And there's, you know, just, there's usually snow. It's just a whole nother level. I love it. I do, I'm not a huge fan of, like, hot summer camping. I don't think I'd enjoy, like, desert camping whatsoever. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Just winter. Or, or winter is the peak. Like, it's best. Yeah. 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 Winter, fall, spring, but, like, sure. dead of summer. It's just so hard to get... To stay cool, you know, so it's not as much fun, you know. Right. What's your first memory camping? Wow. My first memory camping would be. Wow. Tent camping, it would be my dad and my brothers. So my dad took us out in a Coleman wall tent, like. It was missing some of its poles, <laughs> as they always are. And it was like, uh, just smelled of like scotch guard and mold. And it was just, <laughs> it weighed like 35 pounds, you know, and it took forever to get it set up, but it was awesome, you know? And it, uh, it was just, yeah, it was awesome. It rained and I believe my like feet were up against the edge of the tent pushing up against it and so all the rain just came and like went right into my sleeping bag but no, it was great <laughs> it was great yeah I was pretty young I can only imagine I think I was maybe like six I think maybe five or six yeah you Also very young, probably around that five or six age range. Yeah. Um, no, because I was with my sister. Okay. And I am six years older than my sister. So it'd have to be like nine or ten probably. It's like the core okay. memories of going yeah. with my mom, my dad, or my stepdad and my sister. Yeah. Um, I remember my favorite part of camping was just we'd get there, 
my parents would start setting up camp. Yeah. And my sister and I would just take off. <laughs> and we'd just go <laughs> wander in the woods awesome. and explore and be gone for hours. We knew we always knew how to get back. <laughs> and we just like I don't know, it was that like unique sense of freedom. Yeah. Um, especially for a kid. Right. That was really special. You know, like I was the I, I grew up like not being able to ride my bike outside of my street block. <laughs> okay. You know, so to be able to just go off yeah. and explore Whew. was so I loved it. I loved right. it. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know how it is that parents feel like there's that sense of trust there. It's like, <laughs> why is this? Why is it safer when you're mm-hmm. camping? <laughs> but <laughs> maybe they were just so exhausted. Yeah, long they're drive. Like, they're just like, go, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, totally. I feel that. <laughs> when did you start doing stuff like this? Oh man. <clears throat> well, I was nine when I went into. Like it's a scouting program called like it's called Royal Rangers. It's based out of church. It's like Boy Scouts but in church, and it was like a little bit more like paramilitary. So like they had a lot more drills and a lot more emphasis on uniforms and like earning uh, medals and achievements that looked like military kind of stuff. So it was very like it was cool because. It was a lot of order and like chain of command and respect and uh, kind of values around that. Um, and that was that was like I started in that at nine, and then I was in that program until I was in my like mid twenties. So I went like I went through um, an academy of uh, a bunch of different camps, like survival camp, canoeing expedition, hiking expedition. Uh, leadership training and then like a bunch of core um, trainings and then after that I went back and taught at survival camp because I just absolutely fell in love with survival camp um, and was that so training or going back and teaching was that in like after your 20s or was that part of like maybe like your 18 and yeah kind of thing? I think I was yeah. I think I was like either 17 or 18 when I started sure. um, going back as a like instructor and that was just so special like so special to, to like watch these kids come into the pro to the camp like terrified of survival camp because like everybody loves canoeing expedition it's hard work but everybody loves it you get a sunburn you get to stand in a canoe and boat all day hiking is just hiking your yeah. feet are gonna get blisters it's still fun but survival camp is terrifying like knowing that you are given this like meager list of components for a survival kit you show up with only those things and you know that you're um gonna gonna be super hungry for a week and uh (laughs) face whatever kind of weather and adversity because like it's not just you're just out there in the elements like we put them through a lot while they're out there like testing them and um giving them a lot of challenges to complete uh as part of their training so they're just constantly busy and it just they get so hungry and so down. <laughs> oh, sure. And so like just being there uh, to help the kids was really special. Um, a lot of them would want to go home and you're like, no, you, you can't go home. <laughs> wow. You don't like just don't don't do that to yourself. You're yeah. gonna regret it. Your right. rest of your life. Yeah. So it was yeah, that was awesome. Loved that experience, and that's kind of that's where I really fell in love with like survival and bushcraft and stuff. And, sure. Um, yeah. Did you often see them walk out after the, the 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 trip with like the sense of accomplishment? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Like that is so addicting. Seeing young men have that kind of a uh, transformation right in front of you like they went through this hell week and then at the end of it they graduated and they're like yeah I've ach- I achieved that I did that and I have these skills and I I don't fear the things that I feared walking into it anymore yeah it was it's so cool That's huge. yeah and it trans- translates into like life yeah you have these um, these life skills now so 
I wish everybody could experience that. It's, yeah. It's so That's cool. huge. Some years were so much harder than others because there was like, <laughs> there's some years that it would just rain every single day and it was just misery for the kids. Um, <coughs> but yeah, loved it. Yeah. Do you have like a specific memory that stands out? Oh man. There's Either so many. of <laughs> attending yourself or teaching later on. Specific memory. Um. <laughs> yeah, there we uh, we would take domestic rabbits with us, and we would teach them how to properly dispatch, humanely dispatch a rabbit, you know, and process it, butcher it, and then eat it. And uh, <coughs> there were some kids that would want the experience of eating the liver like straight out of the rabbit as soon as you take it out because like the liver is like a clean organ right it's uh okay. it is a, it's something you can eat raw yeah but it's really <laughs> hard to so like we'd always tell the tell the kids like if you want to do this, like you can take a piece of it and just just swallow it. Don't try to chew it. Yeah. But then they'd be like, No. Well, what I'm if I chew it? it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be the one. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they would they would try, they would try, and you know it's one of those things where it's just like a really super nasty sensation. So they would most most of the time do puke. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh. That's that was memorable. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah I think most of it had, revolves around like food items because like one of the requirements is like you have to make a a meal mm -hmm. and eat it while you're at camp you okay. know and bring yeah. it show it to us and so like most of the time like obviously they're not going to go like bag a deer you know it's <laughs> <laughs> not legal and it's really hard okay so they would most of the time like get like a frog and they would like cook the frog legs up yeah but still it's that's hard for kids that are like inner city kids never never done this before um or they would like find an earthworm and try to like boil it and eat it which is disgusting or like a wood grub you know oh man oh yeah. the, okay so wood <laughs> wood grubs um i would use i would eat a wood grub now and then just to give people confidence sure um i've got like a couple pictures of me doing it it's really gross yeah big wood grubs and like you just rip the poop sack off the end of them oh and you toss oh. it back and you know what it's like it's like a fruit gusher you know the fruit Whoa. gushers so like you kind of like uh. You, uh. you bite down on it uh. and then you keep biting yeah and it's kind of rubbery and all of a sudden it just explodes it just pops yeah it's like a uh, like a fatty peanut butter type taste whoa yeah. okay really earthy that same texture as peanut butter <clears throat> Oh, it's the slimy, gooey. slimy, yeah. But it, like, it tastes like earthy oh, like, peanut butter. Interesting. Like, it's not the flavor isn't bad. It's just yeah. like everything else is pretty gross about it. Hmm. But um, <laughs> yeah, eating stuff is tricky. Sure. But my my like venture into survival camping started before I was formally trained. In survival camp okay and it was not a good experience okay <clears throat> so my friend and I when we were I want to say like 13 um, convinced our parents like that we could we would gonna go out and do a survival camp out in March in Wisconsin oh. which is really hit or miss like weather wise right and that we had the skills to do this I mean obviously we've been camping a lot but we didn't really have a handle on what we needed to to do. So unfortunately, we went out there and we built our shelter out of uh, like grasses and stuff, mm -hmm. like mounded dry grass. Okay. And then it was it was like 45 degrees during the day, and we're like, oh, this is fine. We didn't gather enough firewood, and we settled in for the night. Uh, we ate dinner. And then went to bed, and our fire, uh, an ember, caught on our shelter no. and, and started our shelter on fire. So our shelter, we we're like scrambling to put it out, and it's toast. It's gone, right? 
and this is at oh, night oh, now. Oh my gosh. The, so it's middle of the night. Yeah. And then it's freezing. Our, yeah, it's freezing cold. It, now it's now and it's like it's gone. It's oh probably like high high to mid 30s. So it's not freezing, but okay. it is absolutely a dangerous temperature. Yes. And uh, our shelter's toast. And then we didn't gather enough firewood, so our fire went out. And I'm just sleeping on a piece of plastic. Oh my gosh. And I have like I have like uh, like heavy clothes on and like snow pants. Yeah. But I'm absolutely freezing. Uh, I've never told this story, so this is kind of fun to share this. <laughs> so then I started sh shivering really bad. So I'm, I'm starting to get hypothermia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My friend is also shivering. Yes. And so we had made a fire ring of rocks. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna pull the rocks in and oh, like oh, yeah. huddle up the rocks. Oh my gosh. Is a, is a decent idea. Sure. Um, so I get the rocks and I'm like huddled up with them. They're warm and then I, I just, and I keep getting colder and colder and colder, and then I went to sleep. <gasps> That's the problem. I went to sleep. Yeah. And then I have no memory except waking up and just puking everywhere. So my dad actually had a bad feeling in the middle of the night, super early in the morning, I think it was like three in the morning, came out to check on us, drove miles out to see us, found us, uh, passed out, both of us. In, no shelter. In, in no shelter, <laughs> no fire. Uh, yeah, but we were we were uh, in hypothermic shock. Yeah. And we were in like late stages of hypothermic shock because he had to get us, uh, like get us up and try to revive us. Uh, it took a while and then when I finally came to, I just puked because my body was starting to shut down at that point. And um, I just was, I just remember being so cold, so, so cold. But it was like a slow, like, step descent into it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I survived. I survived in that. Oh, there's some plastic. <laughs> That's my shelter getting in the way of the camera shot. So, yeah. So after that, I was like, Keen on like doing it the right way. Sure. And, uh, making sure that the, making sure shelter and fire were <laughs> done yeah. well. And so. your dad was probably happy to set you up. Oh with my the, goodness. Yeah. The program. Yep. Totally. Wow. Yeah. You've had a few close calls, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. I have. <laughs> yep. I've had a yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a few, I've had a lot of injuries. Yeah. A lot of injuries. Um, yeah, I would say so. I'm kind of accident prone. <laughs> yeah. So, I had some broken bones and, you ever broke, broken anything? I sprained my ankle twice. Really? That, and I broke my collarbone when I was like Ooh. three. Okay. So I don't really remember that. Oh, okay. Uh, my dad never lets me forget, because <laughs> it was traumatic. Oh, <laughs> I imagine. Yep. <laughs> yep. It was one of those things where, you know, my parents were split. I was visiting him for one weekend. Um, I was jumping on my grandparents' bed, okay. which is a really high mattress. Yeah. Fell off the bed. <sighs> Broke my collarbone, and he w it was kind of he was like keep an eye an eye on me, yeah, and just like are you good? Oh, I'm not man. sure, you know. Oh, man. Then he said, the way he tells the story, took me to the zoo, Henry Vilas Zoo in okay. Madison, great zoo. Okay. Um. And I was, you know, walking along some rocks, oh. balancing myself. Okay. I like stepped down, and I. He said it was like an like a ooh, uh, but it was like from my core, like oh, it was from somewhere down deep. Oh no! And he, he rushed me to the emergency room, had to explain to my mom oh, geez. that you know her kid a, a, a whole state away got hurt. It was rough. That was the worst of Man. it. I, I'm I'm a pretty cautious person. Um, I never really did well. Okay, in. 
seventh and eighth grade, that's when like the parkour craze was pretty big. My friends and I got really into parkour. <laughs> and my two friends were really good at it, and I wasn't. <laughs> but they really wanted me to be good at it. Oh no. And there was one time we were doing this like vault up on a wall, and I just dug my leg into that wall and just oh, ripped up skin. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No good. Yeah. No good. That was pretty bad. Not a break, but that was pretty bad. That probably hurt. Mm-hmm. Man. Yep. Oh my gosh. Goodness. <laughs> Is that program still around? Yeah, it is. Um, I think they still uh, definitely have the academy running. Uh, my friend is like the Wisconsin uh, district, like the like the, the main com the main commander, the main guy. Yeah, you know of it. So sure. yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great program. It really is. Is that awesome. something you could see getting your kids into? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. If they wanted to? Yeah, that's the thing. Right. I think, like, so I have two boys. They're, they're um, four, uh, four and six months, so sure. super young. And, <laughs> not quite ready. <laughs> not quite ready. I don't know where their interests are going to be, and, sure. and I want to not force it on them. And I want to, like, get them exposed to nature as we have been. We've been, you know, going on walks and yeah. hikes and stuff like that and talking about it. Um, and if it's something that they're super interested in, then yeah, either that or Boy Scouts, like, um, love the, love the scouting programs for sure. They're awesome. Um, there's just a lot of confidence and, and life skills and just respect, right. respect for nature, yeah. respect for other people yeah. that it teaches. So I love that. Yeah. It's awesome. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Totally. I've had this knife since I was 14. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you had mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Do you remember getting it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this was a gift uh, that was given to me for completing, like, the equivalent of Eagle Scout in the program that I was in. Sure. So it was the gold medal of achievement. And um, so that was a really high honor, and it was really special. There's, like, a banquet that they threw for me which was really cool. And this was one of the things that I was given. And it's it's a Boker uh, fixed blade knife. And it's made with, uh, it's, this, it's a stainless blade, um, but it's really, it's like hard stainless. I can't, I can't explain, it's, it sharpens very well and it holds a good edge. Hmm. And um, I have processed a, a whole lot of rabbits with this <laughs> knife and, um, I've managed to not lose it, which is one of the few things in my life that I have not <laughs> lost. So, I'm you know, quite proud wow. of that. So, yeah, and I just love it. I love it. That's sweet. I keep it s stupidly sharp. Mm -hmm. And, ooh, smoke. Ooh. ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I hope to pass it down to one of my kids. They can fight over it. Sure. Which way? <laughs> <laughs> to the death. That's right. <laughs> Fight over it. Fight. <laughs> oh man. Love it. Oh. Yeah, you had you put out a short a little while ago about like your grandpa's pocket knife or everybody's oh, grandpa's yeah. pocket knife. Yeah. And I kid you not, that's my grandpa's pocket <laughs> knife. Like I the minute the video started, I was like, there it is. Totally. And I just I I remember as clear as I'm looking at you him just sitting in his living room on his chair his chair that he sat in always yeah. and just trimming his fingernails <laughs> with that knife awesome. and then using the same knife to cut an apple yeah. using the same knife to you know open yeah. an envelope for me yeah and it made me want a pocket knife so bad as a kid oh, that's awesome. that was like something I wanted every year that's awesome and I want to say 
like my ninth birthday, yeah. he gave me the tiniest Swiss Army knife. It was like awesome. this big. Yeah. It was a golf branded one. Oh, okay. So it was like the dullest blade and then like some <laughs> golfing tools, like a divot <laughs> fixer. And, okay. uh, and of course it had the tweezers. Oh, yeah. But I, I carried that with me yeah. like it was the, the most, most valuable thing in the world. That's so great. Yeah. That's so great. Because <laughs> it didn't matter what the actual value of it was. No. It was that he gave it to you. Yeah, that's exactly. What, that's what was special about exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. <clears throat> it's good to have those family heirlooms, you oh, know, yeah. like... If you got them, hold on to them, for sure. I've got my, yeah, I've got my grandfather's sheath knife that he carried through World War II. Yeah. <laughs> From, uh, I think it was Normandy, Whoa. all the way through to the Battle of the Bulge, um, the Ardennes Forest, um, France, Germany, the entire, the entire thing. Um, he was a medic, so he used it to cut bandages and stuff like okay. that. And he made a leather sheath for it, which is just incredible. Just, yeah, so cool. It was made by my great uncle. Uh, my great uncle worked at a plant in Michigan. It was like an air, airplane motor company. Like they made airplane motors or something like that for, for planes. And, uh... Oh, there's one. Yep. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool. It's a really cool family heirloom. Super awesome to have that. Love it. Mm. I don't think people think like that anymore, like as much. Heirlooms? Like, yeah. Yeah. Heirloom quality stuff. Sure. Like people don't like necessarily make make things or buy things so that they can pass them mm. on, so that they can live, you know, longer. Sure. People just kind of buy stuff and use it and then throw it away or replace it. Right. You know. Yeah. But. But most things aren't built to last anymore. Right. You know. Totally. Yeah. It's kind of a lot of a lot of junk out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did he ever talk about Normandy? I never met him. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, you know, he talked a bit about his experiences to my dad. I think he said he told my dad once or twice about some of the things he saw. He, he they liberated a concentration camp. Oh my gosh! He took pictures of the concentration camp because he was a photographer uh, as well, so like an amateur photographer, and he with a I think it was like a pinhole camera. He, he had liberated a film com a film factory, took some film, and then took photos and developed them under his coat. <laughs> um, and so my dad has these photos from wow. concentration camp. Because he didn't know, he thought, I have to document this, otherwise the world's not going to know what happened here. Wow. It's the way he was thinking. So, sure. like, crazy. Crazy stuff. So... Yeah. It's starting to snow? I think it's just the leaves. Maybe just yeah. had a good gust of wind. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, anyway. Uh -huh. Ooh, that smoke. <sighs> Should be good sleep in the night. I know I'm tired. Yep. Where does a camper keep his money? Where does a camper keep his money? 
in the riverbank. That's awful. <laughs> All right. Okay. You like that, huh? Why do trees have so many friends? Why do trees have so many friends? I don't know. They branch out. They sure do. They sure do. Tart keeps flying away. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I should probably improve my shelter before I go to sleep. <laughs> I spent all day setting yours up. Oh, it is appreciated. Yeah. I would like to not die of hypothermia. Yes. <laughs> Whew. Can you remember that sensation? Yeah. Yep, so it's you just um, incredibly cold, obviously, to start. But then, you know, you're shivering. You start to shiver a lot, violently, like uncontrollably. But then you stop shivering. And that's when it's bad, yeah. when you stop shivering. And then you start to, sometimes people will hallucinate and mm. feel hot. And then they'll take off their clothes because they actually feel oh, hot. Yeah. And that accelerates everything. So like reading a lot of accounts of people who perished on Mount Everest climbs and whatnot, they actually, witnesses saw climbers who were experiencing hypothermia you know, running and just taking Ripping off their jackets everything. and stuff. Oh my gosh. So, because they really, because you just hallucinate and feel like uh, you're actually hot. Gosh. So, um, yeah, but then you just kind of go unconscious, go to sleep. So the worst thing you can really do when you're experiencing like a lot of shivering and stuff like that is to, is to try to sleep like I did. I tried to actually go to sleep. Sure. It's super bad because the problem is not going to get better. Um, so... Got to get up, move around, make a fire, mm -hmm. try to eat some something, eat some high calorie food so you can get your metabolism kickstarted a bit. Um, <clears throat> very tough. And it's so deceiving because I would have never thought that that climate or that you know time of year would would have put me in that circumstance. It's so easy to get hypothermia even at like 40 degrees if it's you know windy or um right on the ground like i was sure. so Indeed. i made so many mistakes <laughs> <laughs> i made so Now it's raining. Yeah, it's like ice. It sounds like hail. It's like, uh, yeah, like a wintry mix is what yeah. they call it here in Wisconsin. A wintry mix. Wintry mix. <laughs> oh yeah, little ice crystals. It's hitting my head, it's not hitting my hand. <laughs> Freezing rain. Awesome. Well, cool. I mean, I think we're pretty much like buttoned up. Yeah. We have a couple cameras to put away. Sure. Should we end our fireside chat? I think so. Yeah. We talked about a lot. Yeah. That's fun. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Cool. Yeah. Party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. <laughs>